Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Uh, today I'm playing around on the gel plate and I'm going to be making patterns with something very precious and sacred. Well, it's only precious and sacred because of COVID this year and that's toilet paper. Yeah, I'm going to use this stuff. Now, anything, I mean just about anything can become a pattern making tool on a gel plate and you'll see that happen with the toilet paper. Keep an eye out for the print that I think is really ugly and how it becomes one that I love. Oh, and also too, you're also gonna find out a little battle that's been going on between my husband and I over toilet paper for 25 years that I didn't even know about. I'm starting out by getting a layer of color here under my gel press plate. This is a 12 by 14 size, so it is big, which means I got lots of room. I figured I needed a little more room because I was using a bigger texture tool. Yep, that roll of toilet paper there. And I'm simply pressing it in there, stamping it in, and seeing what kind of marks this thing will make. This is my first time using a roll of toilet paper to make a pattern with, and I have to say, this is not going to be my last time. Now, what got me thinking about using toilet paper for this? Well, it was a discussion between my husband and I. We've been married for over 25 years, and this is something apparently that's been going on the entire time we've been together, and I had no idea about it. It came up in conversation about how strongly people feel about which way you put the toilet paper on the roll. Do you put it paper on top or paper coming on the bottom? And I said something to the effect of it didn't matter to me whichever way it went. It was no big deal. And he was completely surprised because he apparently has a very strong opinion about it that I had no idea about. He believes the paper goes over the top. And when I put it on, I don't pay any attention to which way it goes, so sometimes the paper's on the top, sometimes the paper's on the bottom. And that means for the past 25 plus years, we've been having a battle of toilet paper that I knew nothing about. Now that I know it's a big deal to him, we're now a paper over the top house. So what about you? Do you pay careful attention when you put the toilet paper on the roll, or do you just simply put that thing on there and don't think about it again? Well, let me know in the comments which way you fall on the toilet paper debate. Now, toilet paper is not the only kind of pattern making tool you've probably got around your house right now. Check out your recycle bin, the trash, bathrooms, kitchens. Those are all great places to find pattern making tools so that you can have some fun making prints. And keep in mind, you can use whatever acrylic paint you've got. Whatever you've got on hand is something fantastic for you to use right now. All the prints that you've seen up till now, I loved how they looked. But that is about to change. You're about to see something go really ugly and then turn into something wonderful because of that. I had high hopes when that teal went onto the plate. Was I'm playing around with that toilet paper and I'm making the impressions with it, these are some wonderful crisp impressions that are coming from this toilet paper. And I played around with squashing it together so that I could get more of an oval shape instead of a round and I was having a grand old time with this. After all, how can you not have fun when you're playing around with a roll of toilet paper? If one color is great, two colors will be even better. So I decided to add a little bit of yellow on there. And I am at about the very end of this tube, so I have squeezed every possible drop out of there, and now I've got some wonderful bright yellow. And I thought, well, that looks great. What about some more color? And this time I decided to bring in purple. As I spread that around, I loved how bright and vibrant that was. And I thought, hey, let's put a little more color on here. So in came some lime green. I'm feeling really good about these colors. I think this is gonna be an amazing print and I'm just eager to put that paper on there to pull it up and see what it is. And you can probably guess that this isn't going to turn out the way I expected. That beautiful, amazing print that I was expecting, yeah, uh, that's not what I'm gonna lift up from here. As soon as I saw it, the first thing I thought was, oops, that's an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly, cause I sure don't like that print much at all. Now there's more paint on that plate, so I'm gonna use it all up. I'm gonna take some prints and really with each one of these, I just keep saying, oops, somewhere in these, there's an opportunity. I don't know exactly what it is, but there's gotta be an opportunity in there somewhere. To those of you that have asked me, do I ever make ugly prints or prints that I don't love? The answer is a most definite yes. And in fact, you're seeing three of them here right now on this video. But here's the thing about ugly stuff. Ugly isn't terrible. 
ugly is a gift and I really do mean that and you'll see by the end of this video how some of this ugly stuff became a wonderful gift on these prints. Another thing that you can do when you're printing with found objects is use metallic or shimmery paint. Now what I'm sharing with you in this video is just the tip of the iceberg of what you can do with found patterns, common everyday things that you've got all around you right now. And by doing just a few things slightly differently, you can get dramatically different looks using the exact same pattern making tools. In my online workshop, Playing With Found Patterns, I break down the concepts step by step for you so you fully understand the how and the why. So if you want to save yourself some trial and error, check out my online workshop over to colorfuljourney.com and yep, there's a link down below for you. So here's what just adding that little touch of gold to this print did suddenly turned it into a much more complex and much more interesting print. There's about half a page of metallic paint on there. So I grabbed the print that had about half a page of printing on it. And when I pull this up, you're going to see that that red paint has a little bit different look on it now that it's got the metallic. And since there's still just a little touch of wet paint here and there, I'm just going to grab it and capture it on the edge of this print. Metallic and shimmering paints come in all sorts of colors, not just golds and silvers. So I grabbed one that had a bit of a teal color to it to play around with to add some more color onto those green and purple and blue prints that I had from earlier. You might have noticed that I seem to be wiggling the toilet paper when I put it down. And that's because I am. When you give something a little bit of a wiggle like that, it allows it to pick up just a little bit more of the paint and give you a crisper image. So I've added the metallic on here and I like it, but it's not at the I love it stage. So I think I'm gonna pick up the excess metallic paint on here and then I'm gonna put some more layers on there because until a print gets to that point where I'm in love with it, it's fair game to put more stuff on. I might have to admit that there's also another reason that I'm putting another layer on here and that is I'm having a grand old time playing with the toilet paper smooshing it together and making ovals or using circles. This thing is just a whole lot of fun to play with. So in comes that green and purple print and now I'm gonna add this layer to it and it's gonna change how it looks. And I have to say, I am so in love with this print now that there is nothing more that I wanna add to it at the moment. So I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna set it aside. There is some wonderful texture and color that's built up on that plate and I absolutely wanna capture that. So I'm going to grab another print here and let the layers build up. As I'm grabbing up any of the damp paint, adding it onto the paper, those layers are building up and this print is getting more of an aged patina kind of look to it, which is different from look we had on the last print. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've been enjoying this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I've got a new one out. And if you want to know more about playing with found patterns, check out my online workshop over to colorfuljourney.com. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.